The snatch. The snatch is one of the most technical and explosive movements in sports. It requires a barbell to be lifted from the floor to a straight arm overhead position in one continuous movement, requiring precision, power, and flexibility. For analytical purposes and ease of coaching, the snatch can be broken down into a sequence of phases characterized by the posture of the weightlifter relative to the bar position. These phases include the start position, the first pull, transition, second pull, the catch, and the finish, or recovery to a standing position. The first five phases are often considered to be the most critical, as they occur in less than one second, and involve a power output much greater than that of other lifts that begin from rest and last one or two seconds, such as the squat or bench press. The start position. The start position of the snatch is highly dependent on the limb segment lengths of the lifter and the lifter's mobility, but generally speaking, it requires the lifter to adopt a wide grip on the barbell, feet positioned under the hips and either neutral or slightly externally rotated, barbell positioned over the metatarsal bones, a neutral or slightly arched spine, chest up, scapula retracted, and shoulders either directly above or slightly in front of the barbell. The ankle is in a state of dorsiflexion, and the knee and hip joints are similarly flexed to approximately 55 degrees of the knee and 40 degrees of the hip. Once again, this is dependent on the lifter. The first pull requires the lifter to overcome the inertia of the barbell by using the larger muscles across the hip, such as the glutes. This is achieved through the use of a first-class lever system, where the barbell is the resistance, the hip is the fulcrum, and the glutes, hamstrings, and erector muscles of the back are the effort arm. The quadriceps also play a key role in this phase to create extension of the knee by use of a pulley system from the patella tendon to the quadriceps, which increases the mechanical advantage of the knee joint. This is an example of a third-class lever, as the effort arm, the quadriceps, is closer to the fulcrum, the knee, than the resistance arm, the barbell. The mechanical work done on the bar for its vertical displacement is greater during this phase than in the second pull. Plantar flexion is seen at the ankle, with the foot remaining flat on the ground, and the trunk is held at a relatively constant angle to the ground during this phase, which is important for efficient transfer of force in later phases. The transition phase serves to realign the lifter relative to the barbell in preparation for the second pull. It is also known as the double knee bend, because after reaching their first maximum extension, the knees go through a period of flexion as the body is pulled towards the barbell and the hip continues to extend. This knee flexion uses the muscle's stretch shortening cycle to produce elastic energy in the knee extensor muscles, similar to that seen in a counter movement jump. This stored elastic energy is used for explosive muscular power, which is necessary during the second pull. Therefore, the transition phase is one biomechanical variable of the movement task that can easily be modified by a coach to improve efficiency and performance of the snatch by having the lifter execute it quickly with small knee flexion to fully take advantage of this stretch shortening cycle. The second pull is the most explosive and powerful phase of the snatch. During this phase, the hip, knee and ankle are all violently extended, which is termed triple extension. The hip is the first joint to reach its maximal angular velocity, followed by the knee, which is extending for the second time. And finally, the ankle is powerfully plantar flexed, raising the lifter's heels off the ground. During this phase, the hip extension velocity is greater than the corresponding velocity of the knee, and the maximal velocities of both knee and hip are greater than that seen in the first pull. For an effective lift, the vertical linear velocity of the barbell should be continuously increased throughout the lift until the end of the second pull, because the existence of two clear velocity peaks would demand additional energy from the lifter to overcome the negative momentum of the barbell during its velocity's decrease. As the barbell reaches its maximum vertical displacement, the lifter rapidly pulls themselves under the bar, receiving it in an overhead squat with arms fully extended, knees and hips flexed, and ankle dorsiflexed. The quadriceps eccentrically contract to control the rate of the body's deceleration to the bottom of the squat, where the rhomboids, traps, core, quadriceps, and glutes all isometrically contract to catch the bar in its optimal position, being directly over the lifter's center of mass. The vertical drop of the barbell from its maximum height achieved to the bottom of the catch position should be minimized so the muscles do not have to catch a weight with downward momentum, which would negatively affect the efficiency of the lift. The recovery of the snatch simply involves the lifter concentrically contracting the knee extensors such as the quadriceps while maintaining the barbell locked out overhead in order to stand to full knee and hip extension, signifying the end of the lift. The trajectory of the barbell is a direct result of the forces applied to it by the lifter. During the snatch, the extension of the lifter's joints induce a great amount of the barbell's vertical displacement. However, a small horizontal displacement is also apparent and executes a characteristic toward-away-toward -toward pattern. 
During the first pull and the transition, the bar moves towards the lifter while moving vertically. It moves away from the lifter in the second pull before moving back toward the lifter in the catch. This horizontal movement in the sagittal plane should be minimized to reduce the work done in making corrections during the lift. Weightlifting shoes help provide a stable, firm stance on the platform. They are designed with stiff, non-compressible soles and a raised heel approximately 2.5 cm in relation to the forefoot to create a plantar flex position when standing. This may be beneficial by engaging greater muscle excitation in the knee extensor muscles during the pull, providing greater lateral stability in the catch, keeping the shank segments of the lower leg more vertical in the pull and in the catch, reducing the amount of forward inclination of the trunk during the catch and the recovery, and allowing for greater vertical force production required during heavy lifting. The hook grip. In order to prevent grip becoming a limiting factor in the pulling phases of the snatch, the hook grip is commonly employed to create a tighter and stronger grip on the barbell. The hook grip method involves grasping the bar with the thumb going around the bar first, then the index and middle fingers wrap around the first joint of the thumb. Novice lifters can find this quite uncomfortable at first due to the unfamiliar thumb position and the kinesthetic adjustment that needs to be made, with the hook grip normally taking two to four weeks to become comfortable even at heavy loads.